Hi guys, Alan here, Solid Rock Bible Class. I am so glad you're with me this morning. Hey, the subject we're going to talk about, kind of a little different than Thanksgiving, but it all falls into Thanksgiving, is a phrase, not enough. Not enough. John, the sixth chapter, verse number five, we're going to pick up here. And you'll recognize the story. It says, When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw the great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon's brother, said unto him, There's a lad which hath five barley loaves and two fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in this place. So the men sat in numbered about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise the fishes, as many as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore he gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with fragments of, of five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Notice here the Apostle Paul, uh, what he says in 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, verse 18. Paul says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Well, you know, it's really not much of a problem to take and to give thanks, like we talked about last week. It's not much of a problem to give thanks when the provision's adequate, when everything, when you have plenty, it's not hard to thank God for it. Sometimes we forget to thank God for it, but it's not hard to do. But the real test of faith comes when you're asked to be thankful for something and there's just not enough there. You know, I've taken and I've worked all week long and it's Friday and I get my paycheck and, uh, but when you take a look at your bills and you take a look at your check, you discover you don't have enough to cover it. You know, at the end of the month, you have more month than what you have money. That type of a thing. And all of us have been there. <coughs> but can we still be thankful for not enough? Yeah. The Bible wants us and tells us that we need to be thankful. God wants us to be thankful for what the provision is he's given us. Well, it seems that Jesus and his disciples, they're taken and they're faced with this uh, situation in the text that we're looking at here. And uh, Jesus and the disciples are attempting to find some time alone here. But when, when the crowd saw them, they took and they followed them, and they just wouldn't leave them alone. So Mark says, when Jesus saw the crowd, he had compassion on them. For they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began to teach them and, 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 and work with them. However, it's getting late. It's late in the evening. The crowd, it's still sticking around. They didn't just kind of start, you know, wandering away. So the disciples came to them and said, hey, uh, you need to send these, these people away because, you know, it's been all day. They're hungry. They need food, and we sure don't have enough food out here where we're at to feed them. The hour's late, it says. But Jesus said, give them something to eat. Now, that this is going to turn into a problem, isn't it? At this point, we kind of see the first of what is not enough in the story that we're looking at. First of all, they... They, because they, they've been with Jesus all day, there's not enough time for them to go and to go buy provisions at all. There's not enough time. And I'm sure all of us have been faced with that at some point in time. For if they had 
gone away to go get something in the marketplace. The markets, they probably, they were already closed. If they weren't closed, how much time was it going to take to get there and get back and prepare the food? I think all of us know what it is not to have enough time. But guess what? We still need to be thankful. Even though the, we don't have enough time, we still need to be thankful. Now, now Mark says, they said, but, but John identified the, the spokesman here as we're looking at here, uh, as Philip who said, 200 penny worth of bread, it's not enough. And so a penny worth, it's, it's like a day's wages. And, and so, I mean, we're talking about, you know, eight months of wages that we're looking at here. Now, now the text, it doesn't take and tell us this particular, you know, the particular amount here of everything. Perhaps it's the amount of money that they had in the treasury. Perhaps it's, it's just them trying to figure out how much money is it actually going to take to feed all these people. But Philip definitely points out one thing. He says, we don't have enough money. So Philip and the rest of the disciples, they took and they, they talked to Jesus and asked him, what do we do? This is impossible, but Jesus says, do it. The second not of enough, you know, here that we're looking at, there wasn't enough money. There wasn't enough time. There wasn't enough money. You know, I don't think we have to belabor that point a whole lot here. I think all of us come across that when there's not enough time and there's just not enough money. But Philip, he takes and uh, and we see here that that Andrew he's he's busy out here looking for what could be done. And Andrew reports back to Jesus and says, "Hey, I've got a guy here. I've got a kid here. This lad that is he's called." He has five barley loaves and he has two fishes. But then even Andrew says, he says, what is this among so many people? In other words, Jesus, we found something, but it's not enough. Yeah, you know, kind of the story that we're, we're looking at here, it's filled with this not enough. There's not enough time for the crowd to go and, and buy food. There's not enough time money for the disciples to take and to buy food and then we've got two barley we have two fishes and five barley loaves here and that's not enough to go around i mean we're talking five thousand men and women that it talks about here and and that's not or five thousand men but that doesn't talk about the the women and possibly the kids here i mean we could have fifteen twenty thousand people here now when we're faced with these not enough situations, we have to watch our attitudes. We have to watch our thinking. Because if we're not careful, not enough will cause us to fret. It causes us to complain. It causes us to worry. Have you ever met that person that's always complaining? about not having enough money or not having enough of this or not having enough of that. But what most people fail to realize is that part of the reason they don't have enough is because they're always complaining. They're always complaining they don't have enough. That's what the problem really is. They never have enough because they believe that they don't have enough. And they believe they'll never have enough. So if you're one of those kind of people, you need to kind of change your vocabulary a little. You need to change your thought pattern just a little bit. You need to quit speaking about what you don't have and start speaking about what you do have because we look here and they have something. It's not enough, but they have it. When we look in the Bible, it, it tells us, he says, let the weak say I'm strong, doesn't he? The more we grumble, the more we complain, the more that, we, you know, the more that it's going to become a problem. But Jesus, he didn't complain. Notice, Jesus did not complain about the five loaves and two fishes. 
In fact, the Bible says that Jesus took the loaves and he gave thanks. That's really the point of the entire thing that we're talking about here today. Giving thanks. Giving thanks when you may not have enough. We've got to learn to be thankful even when we don't think it's enough. You see, sometimes what we think is not enough is actually more than enough. See, what they actually had in their hands, they didn't think was enough, but we see that it is enough. Because when it's placed in the hands of Jesus, when it's placed in the hands of God, he can make it enough. I, I believe the difference here was the thanksgiving. The disciples took, and they kind of resented not having enough. But Jesus was thankful for not having enough. The disciples, remember Jesus said he knew what he was about to do. The disciples didn't, right? The disciples took and they despised not having enough. But Jesus, he embraced it. The disciples saw not enough as a problem, but Jesus saw not enough as an opportunity here. Often the difference is between the between frustration and fulfillment here is the way we look at it, because many times the difference in success and failure is giving thanks. Sometimes the difference in poverty and provision is giving thanks. It's how we respond to the situations that we're into. I don't really care who we are or who you are. It doesn't matter the financial status or the social status. Everybody, everybody will face some not enough situations. But when we're faced with those situations that we come across that are just not enough, what do we do? How do we respond? Do we grumble? Do we complain? Or do we take and we thank God for not having enough? Now, this is one of those situations, I'll be very honest with you. It's difficult. A few years ago, we was having some terrible, terrible problems that were, were off in, in, the, in the business end of things here. And as we look at the business end of things, it, there was not enough. It was a problem. There wasn't enough to make payroll and to make bills. And it was like, what do we do? And it came down to something key. I started thanking God every time that we had a job. I started thanking God every time a check came in the mail. See, that's the key. Life never leaves us nothing. Life always leaves us with something, but sometimes not enough really can be enough. And it seems to be not enough because we misunderstand. And maybe many, many times we misunderstand how we're supposed to respond. It may be that sometimes that not enough is something like a seed that needs to be planted versus consumed. You know, the frustration comes about when we eat and we consume that which is meant to be planted. The disciples were frustra frustrated here with, with these two fishes and five barley loaves because they thought it wasn't enough for the crowd to consume. And guess what? They were right. But Jesus was thankful for the two fishes and the barley loaves. He knew what he was going to use them for. He knew what he was going to do with them. There's, there's so many people that they, they just don't, they don't pay their tithes. They don't give because they say, there's not going to be enough if I do that. They don't understand. You can't harvest a crop unless, first of all, you plant a crop. See, Jesus was thankful for not enough. The Bible says Jesus took the loaves and the fishes and he began to bless them and break them. That's where the miracle happened. That's where the miracle took place. In between the blessing and the breaking, as Jesus 
blessed and broke the pieces of bread and two fishes, it multiplied. The more thankful you are, the more you're going to have to be thankful for. That's why we have to take and look at life differently and we have to look at life with gratitude. Jesus took the bread and the fishes and blessed and broke them into pieces. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowd and Jesus was thinking, thanking and, and, um, and, and blessed it in the breaking of the bread and he passed it to the multitude and the miracle took place. The bread and the fishes, they began to multiply. Can you imagine what the disciples really thought as they were going down through there and, you know, they got down to about the, the fifth, sixth person and they said, he's going to reach in there and there's nothing going to be in that bag. But there was. See, the miracle here took place before they needed it. It took place, it didn't take place before they needed it. It took place when they needed it. Oftentimes, we fret, we complain, and the miracle's going to take place when we need it. In other words, we want to wait. We don't, in other words, we, we just want to, to wait until we can see something happen before we praise God, and that's not the way it works. Don't wait until the battle's over to thank God. Thank God for every single step along the way with it. Then notice, Jesus tells the disciples, go gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing will be lost. Notice they started out with not enough, but they ended up with more than enough. So just be thankful for your not enough and put it, put it in the hands of God. Let God take and multiply it because what is not enough in our hands, it can be enough in the hands of Jesus. So, yeah, Jesus said, go gather up these fragments that remain, that nothing will be lost. When, when the Lord takes and and turns more than enough, or not enough into more than enough, we need to be careful how we handle it. We need to be careful about how that we handle the leftovers. Don't forget to pick up the pieces. Sometimes we're faced with not enough in situation with time and with money because we didn't pick up the pieces last time. Some people, they, do, they don't want to deal with leftovers. Well, you know, we see here that God works with leftovers. How do we handle our leftovers? God will always make sure to supply our needs. He's going to take care of us. Not according to your needs, but according to his riches and his glory in Christ Jesus. Just remember, the take home here is remember to thank God even when it's not enough. Hey, this is Alan. I'll catch up with you a little bit later.